Hi everyone, my name is Meredith and I would like to welcome you to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past six years. The purpose of this call is not only to teach you specific business skills, but most importantly to teach you life skills that are essential to getting you to the next level in both business and your personal life. I have the honor and privilege to introduce the creator and host of this call, Mr. Ramazio Fulcher. Ramazio is an extremely successful international entrepreneur, as well as a sought-after leader, trainer, coach, and mentor. Ramazio not only teaches others, but he himself applies what he teaches through his intense focus and dedication, which has allowed him to achieve unprecedented success. In the last six years, I have known Ramacio. I have seen him build a team of over 750,000 people at record speed. I have seen him break records in network marketing, become one of the world's top MLM income earners, and help thousands of people all over the world make life-changing income. Over the last several years, Ramacio has made it his number one focus to grow his faith and his relationship with God. His dedication and faith are so strong that I have seen him go through incredibly tough times, yet he can bounce back emotionally within minutes. He has been an incredible example for me as to how faith can change your life. Having said that, Ramacio puts 100% of himself into these calls to share everything he has learned in the hopes that his listeners can benefit from his words. Each of these calls are fully intentional. Ramacio's number one goal is for it to be a blessing to other people because he truly believes that what you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. He is here on this call today to serve you, to teach you, to enlighten you. Without further ado, let me get out of the way and introduce your millionaire mentor, Marketplace Minister, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Are you there? Absolutely. I am here. Can you hear me, Meredith? Yes, I can. All righty. Thank you so much for stepping up and being our host. I want to welcome all of you back again for another edition of the Sunday Keep It Pro training call. If you don't know, we've been doing this call for over six and a half years, same line, same time. And the purpose of this call, ladies and gentlemen, is we, we focus on two, uh, two things that we focus on on this call. Number one, from time to time, you will hear us teach the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the very top of whatever business you are promoting. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't teach things that I read out of, read out of a book that sound cool. I teach things that I know work time and time and time again because I've done them myself, all right? But also, not just specific skills that sometimes we will teach on Sundays, we also will teach life skills as well. Sometimes people ask often, why do we teach both specific skills and also life skills? The reason why we do that is on your entrepreneurial journey, you're going to notice that as you grow as an individual, i.e. life skills, everything else around you is a reflection of you. So you're going to need both specific skills to attain uh, the level of success that you're after, but you're also going to need to grow your life skills as well. You're going to notice that they go hand in hand. With that being said, guys, we want to welcome all of you. If this is your first time or if you've been someone that's been with us the entire time, come one, come all. We don't charge you to be on this call. We've never sold you anything. In other words, in six and a half years, you've never heard myself or any of our speakers dare ask for your credit card. We don't promote products. We don't promote company names. This is a completely safe and neutral environment, okay? But there is one request that I have of each and every single one of you that are listening. Meredith, she said it in the beginning of the call, but I want to echo it again. There's one thing that I ask, and only one thing that I ask. And if you are on the line today and you're, trying, you're scratching your head – trying to figure out ways for you to be more successful in life. I know sometimes when you eat a burrito and you try and eat it all at one time, it can literally be, it, it can be exhausting. It can actually give you heart, heart pain trying to eat something that's so big in one gulp. 
So rather than, rather than you trying to eat this entire burrito that we have here for you today in, in one big bite, let me give you the core. Let me give you the essence of this entire hour that we're about to spend. I'm going to give it to you because it's the only request that I request of every single listener, both those of you that are listening live and those of you that will listen to the replay on YouTube. And here is the request. We believe that what we make happen for others, God will make it happen for us. God, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to really understand if you're taking notes today, and I know you've probably written that down before and time and time again, but there you are in the valleys of life, whether it be a relationship challenge, a health challenge, a financial challenge, uh, a parenting challenge. Uh, you know, a community challenge, and you're trying to figure out, God, are you there? God, are you listening to me? God, I haven't heard from you in a while. Please tell me what to do. And here it is, the California kid <laughs> right here lays it right between your eyes. One more time, we believe what we make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. Would you say that out loud with me? What I make happen for others, God will make it happen for me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't figured out by now, your promotion is dependent upon your giving. Your promotion, your elevation, your change that you're waiting for, whatever area of life you're talking about, it's dependent of, not just upon your prayers, it's dependent upon your action. What specific action am I referring to? Giving. You see, you play a role in this ensemble. You play a role in this. You are important. Yes, you are. I know that situationally, you may not think much of yourself. You may not be where you want to be. I understand all that. But when you finally understand how the currency of life works, when you finally come to the place, of, the place of understanding of how currency really works. You know, if you really break that word down, currency, and you begin to focus on the first part of the word, you'll notice the word current. And current means flow. Things got to flow. And God flows through order, okay? So there you are wanting change in your life. You're wanting restoration in your life. You're wanting answers. And you're trying to figure out, God, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to do? What do I? Listen, it's about you giving. And I know you're scratching your head. Give what? I don't have any money, says some of you. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to give. Listen to me. Write this down. Grab a piece of paper. Grab some lipstick, something. Write this down. Anytime on this call today, when I mention the word seed, the word seed means beginning. So anytime I say the word seed, that means beginning, all right? So you, my friend, you are a walking, talking, I mean, you, you're full of seeds. You're full of seeds. And so therefore, when we talk about giving, yes, you can give money, you can give time, you can give a smile, you can give a joke. There's so many different things you can give as a seed. For the harvest that you're looking to actually reap. Let me say that again. There's so many different things that you can give as a seed so that the harvest that you are expecting, you know, you know what you're expecting. You know that you know what you want God to do for you. You know what it is you're working hard for, you you've been laboring for. You know what it is that you want to happen in your life. And I'm giving you the simple yet profound answer today. And we say, it, we say it at the beginning of every call we do for the last six years. So if you want to know what this environment is all about, I'm leading by example. Here it is. What I make happen for others, God is going to make it happen for me. When you, just write it down. What I make happen for others, God is going to make it happen for me. I, I know I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that. I, I don't know how to do that. I don't know that. I've never heard of that. I'm, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that. And I'm not good at that. But I am good at this. 
So I'm going to let my light shine with what I'm good at. Because I know whether it's one person or one million people or 10, 20, 30 million people that I'm helping, I understand that literally me helping one person, me making a difference, me being the answer to one person's prayer or one person's question or one person's problem, just me being, me being the little old answer just to one. Just by me helping one, God is going to turn right back around and bless me for what it is that I'm actually expecting. So if you want to understand what this is all about, it's all about you coming to the place of maturity and understanding that what you, my friend, yes, I'm talking to you, the one that just jumped on last. Yes, I'm talking to you, the one that stumbled on this YouTube and you just trying to figure out who is this guy? Who, who, I don't, I've never heard him before. Who, I, how do you, never mind how you pronounce my name. I'm talking to you in another country. I'm talking to you wee hours in the morning. I'm talking to you midday afternoon. I'm talking to you wee hours in the, in the nighttime. And there you are, some kind of way you thought you was going to click on somebody else and you stumbled on me. And I'm telling you, the answer, here it is. What you make happen for others, God is going to make it happen for you. What you make happen for others, he's going to turn right back around and make it happen for you. I'm saying that over and 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 over again because I want each and every single one of you to get the point of why we've been here six years, six and a half years. I want you to really get it. I'm not here to gather a bunch of people around me to hear about my successes and my stories in life. I could care less. I'm here. I'm not here to be famous. I'm here to be effective. And the number one thing that I wish for all of you, I just want you to understand that the harvest that you're expecting the promotion that you're expecting, it is tied to your giving. It's tied. I know, and I know some of you just, you, know, you may not have money to give. That's fine. I know, and you ask me, how do I know? Because the way that God set it all up long before you was a twinkle in your daddy's eye, the way God set it all up, it's real simple. Seed time, which means planting seeds. And every time I say the word seed, I want you to think that means beginning and harvest. And you know what a harvest is, right? You already know what a harvest is. A harvest is that thing you've been waiting on, that thing you've been expecting. You know what it is. But it's tied to you planting something. It's tied to your giving. And that is the point, my friend, I want you to take away from this call. All right, now that we got that disclaimer out the way, can we get down to business? Can we get down to business? Come on, guys. Let's go to work. All right, listen, uh, today's call, the theme of today's call is the law of honor. I'm going to really take my time today. I'm hoping that we can finish by 5 o'clock Pacific, so that's 45 minutes from now. If we go over, I promise you I won't sell you short. I promise you it will be well worth the extra time. So if you are in a position where you can take some notes, uh, listen intensely, uh, don't worry about the recording. These calls are already uh, recorded. Uh, they'll be, they're always recorded, and they'll be uploaded to the YouTube channel. If you don't know how to find me on YouTube, it's just my first and last name, Ramacio Fulcher. And then sometimes we post them on uh, my Facebook page. Once again, it's just Ramacio Fulcher. All right, but this topic, guys, this is something, listen to me, please. Uh, this is something that's extremely important. And 99.999% of us, all over the world, we were never taught this. The theme of today's call is called the law of honor, okay? The law of honor. What I want you to focus on before we even begin, okay? And don't worry about trying to write down everything I say. I'd rather you get yourself in a quiet place, like go in your closet, shut the door, you know what I mean? Get somewhere quiet, turn off the distractions, just hear my voice. And don't worry if you don't understand or you cannot eat the entire burrito. That's okay. Just, 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 just get the piece that's for you. I promise you, this hour that we're going to spend together is going to be of good use. It's going to be applicable to no matter what you're doing, no matter if you're white, black, Mexican, Filipino, a heathen, Christian, Muslim, atheist, it don't matter. This is the call you need to be on. I promise you. 
All right? Here we go. Most of you uh, are not taught the law of honor. And if you're not taught it from home, then you don't know it. Let me say that again. Most people listening have never, ever been taught this. They've never been taught this. And so when you don't, when you don't know, you just don't know. But I want to I wanna, I wanna first set the tone by getting you to understand that when we look through the Bible, and no, I have not read the whole Bible yet, okay, but I can tell you that there's two main things about the Bible that we ought to take away. Number one, uh, you know, when we read the Bible, we learn the person of Jesus. And the person of Jesus creates peace in our life. Okay? That's the first thing we can learn from reading the Bible. But, I, but the second thing that we learn or we learn the principles, the principles of Jesus, which prepare us for earth. Let me say that again. It's two parts of the Bible. Number one, you can read the Bible and you'll notice, oh, okay, you know, you'll notice, you, you'll, notice you'll, you'll learn things about the person of Jesus, his characteristic traits, how he responds to trouble, all of this types of stuff. The person of Jesus, right? And that it's designed to create peace. Even though you may not have peace around you, through looking at the life of Jesus, we learn how to have peace within us, right? Okay. That's not what we're talking about today. But there's a second part of the Bible that, you, you, that also is, is really woven into the entire Bible, and that's the principles of Jesus which prepare us for earth. When we talk about principles, this is what I want you to write down. His laws create your prosperity. In other words, long before you were in your mother's womb, God had created a set of laws. He had created a set of laws. Didn't matter whether you were a believer or non-believer. But he said basically, if you follow these laws, you'll win. You don't, you won't. So why am, I, why am I starting off with this first? Because, see, oftentimes we will pray and we will hope for change, but it's not until we understand the law that we need to adhere to that we're actually going to get the change that we want. You must write this down. God is not a magic genie bottle. He's not a magic genie bottle where you can just sit there, pray, do nothing, and everything in your life miraculously changes. It does not work that way. So what I'm saying to you guys, there are some laws, and we're not going to go over all of them today, but there are some laws, we're talking about the principles of Jesus that prepare you for earth. And so when we talk about his laws create prosperity, one of the things I want to point out before we get into the law of honor is I want to point out what wisdom is. I want to point out what wisdom is. And I'm going to keep it very elementary and very simple. Wisdom is the ability to discern difference. If you're taking notes, write that down. Wisdom is the ability to discern difference. It's very, very important. Now, the difference between people, the difference between a moment, the difference between colors, the difference between income, 
the difference between everything. Wisdom is the ability to discern difference. So for those of you that are asking for more wisdom, what you're in essence asking for is a greater ability to discern the difference. You ever heard two people can look at the same thing, but they come away with totally different experiences of what they saw? In other words, the same experience can happen to two people, same exact experience, but they each walk away with a totally different experience. Wisdom is the ability to discern difference. Now, before we get to the law of honor, we've got to talk about the first law. The first law, guys, is the law of difference. And I'm not, I'm not going to do a training today on the law of difference as much as I really want to. I mean, but that training in itself is an hour, hour and a half, two hours. It's so good. I mean, it's so good, I even got to say it myself. I like it myself. It's just that good. It really is. Okay? But I just want to highlight, number one, before we can get to the law of honor, we've got we to gotta stop by the law of difference. The law of difference, the success of people is in their difference. The success of people is in their difference. What is your difference? All right? There's the difference in people. There's a difference in what people pursue. There's a difference, there's a difference in what people have decided to overcome. There's a difference in people's gift that they pursue. There's a difference in what people walk away from. There's a difference in what people magnify in their mind. There's a difference in what people are willing to ignore. There's a difference in who people are willing to trust. And so forth and so on. Let me give it to you this way. If you can't tell me what your difference is, then you haven't discovered it. I'm going to say that again. If you cannot tell me what your difference is, then you have not discovered it. Which means no one else knows your difference. And that means if no one knows your difference, then no one is pursuing you for the gift within you. Therefore, if no one is pursuing you for the problem that you solve in life, then you will live a life unrewarded for your difference. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, we can end the call right there. We haven't even got to the law of honor yet. Let me say it again. If you cannot tell me, this is how important difference is. If you cannot tell me, I'm talking to all of you, not some of you, all of you. If you cannot tell me what your difference is, then you haven't discovered it. Which is okay, but not after this call. You, you, we've got to know what your difference is. But if you haven't discovered it, that means that no one else knows your difference. And if no one knows your difference, then that means no one is pursuing you for the gift that you, that's within you. And if no one is pursuing you for the gift that's in you, then that means 
you are living a life unrewarded for your difference. See, let me give you some examples. When I say the name Tiger Woods, you think of golf. That's his difference. When I say the name Muhammad Ali, you think of boxing. That was his difference. When I say the name Michael Jordan, you think of basketball. That was his difference. When I say the name Oral Roberts, you think of healing. That was his difference. When I say the name Bishop T.D. Jakes, you think of a pastor. That was his difference. When I say the name, i.e. your name, what what comes to mind? What comes to mind? We're talking about the law of difference right now. Just for a quick second, just for a quick second, I want to point this out to you. Your, the reward is much different. The reward, for dif- the reward for difference is much different than the reward for similarity. The reward for difference is much different than the reward for sameness, for being similar. You see, your difference decides your promotion. When a woman chooses to marry a man, she got married to him because he was different. Your difference decides your paycheck. Your difference decides who pursues you. Your difference decides your income. Your difference decides your zip code. And so that's really important that we just, I'm not going to go any further on difference because I want to get to the law of honor. But before we can get to the law of honor, you have to understand the law of difference. Now, let's move forward and let's go directly to the second law, which is the law of honor. The law of honor, and again, 99.99% of most people have not been taught this. So I'm going to encourage you to re-listen to this audio four or five times. Take really feverish notes. Apply these notes and teach this everywhere you go. It's so important. This is not some stuff I read, I think it's cool. No, this is some stuff I know. It works time and time and time and time again. The law of honor. Honor is the willingness to reward someone for their difference. Write that down. Honor is the willingness to reward someone for their difference. That's what honor is. But do you see how you can't reward someone for their difference if you haven't noticed what's different about him or her? But the law of honor is the reward, is you rewarding someone for their difference. All right? Now, 90% of success is decided by knowing who to honor. Oh, my goodness, man, this stuff is so good, man. I can't, I'm glad I'm teaching this. This is good. 90% of your success. You thought 90% of your success was decided by, well, I work really hard, I'm doing it. That's a part of it. That's a part of it. 90% of your success is decided by knowing who to honor. Now, what I'm about to say next, I want you to put 10 asterisks next to what I'm about to say. Remember in the beginning, I said to you, every time I say the word seed, it means beginning. Honor is the seed that guarantees access. Honor 
is the seed that guarantees access. You know, I'm going to do something today that I normally don't do. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that I don't get in trouble for doing this, but she's the perfect person to talk about when we talk about access. There's a young lady that I know very well for six years that she used to be a massage, uh, uh, excuse me, a physical therapist. You know, work on your body. You got aches and pains. She did, it, she did that for many, many years. And long story short, her and I, we met at a conference. We met at a conference many years ago. And long story shorter than short, <laughs> she's now my personal executive assistant for the last three years or so. And what I want to point out is how did she become my executive assistant for a business that has nothing to do with physical therapy? How did this all happen? It happened because of the law of honor. Honor is the seed that guarantees access. You see, this young woman, she honored me. And I'm going to talk to you today about all the variations and all the different forms of how you show honor. The very first thing that she did is I had some ailments that I was, you know, some injuries. And she was a physical therapist, and she lives about 40 minutes from where I live. And she offered, write this down, write this down if you're listening, she offered to come up and to give me personal physical therapy at my home on my injury. So if you're trying to understand what is honor, number one, she chose to come and serve. No strings attached. She came to give her services to me. That is where our relationship started. Now, what did I just say? Honor is the seed that guarantees access. Let me go as far as to say this. Anytime you want to get close to someone, and when I talk about close, you do know that changing your life requires people. You, you know that for you to change your life, yes, you have to, you know, change your mind. Yes, you've got to grow mentally and all that stuff. That's all true. But to really manifest the change, you're going to have to deal with somebody, correct? You're going to have to deal with some people, right? And what we're saying is that because in this lifetime, for you to have your goals and dreams, et cetera, it requires you to deal with people. Honor is the seed that guarantees access. She honored me the moment she met me. She said to me, hey, Ramacio, you're that guy I keep hearing about. That you're, you're that big leader, that big guy that's done wonderful things in this particular profession, and you're, you're this. And she started, you know, complimenting me. Basically, she's showing me what? She's showing me honor. And I just told you that honor is the seed that guarantees access. Aren't you at the place in your life where you want something that's guaranteed? Like you don't want to hope anymore? Honor is the seed that guarantees access. And now, fast forward, because of the relationship that I have with her, and she's my executive assistant, Based upon the business uh, uh, that we're working in right now, her future is set for life. The type of prosperity, I'm talking money, that's right, money, that she is about to get paid, I, I can't, I'm not at liberty to disclose what it is, but let's just say she's set for the rest of her life. 
for the rest of her life. And when you when you when you when you when you when you roll back the hands of time and you say, Well, how did all this happen to a physical therapist? I'm telling you the law of honor. That's why I want your full attention. All right? Now, let's, care, let's, let's keep moving here. If you learn honor, you can access any environment on earth. If you trace all of the losses to a moment in your life, it was a moment of dishonor. I'm going to say that again. If you trace back all of the losses, I'm talking about the losses that you had something to do with, it was a moment of dishonor. This is how important this law is. I'm still working on this law at this very moment. Now, honor, write this down, is the willingness to place value on someone's difference. We talked about that a moment ago. Honor is the willingness to place value on someone's difference. Honor is a bridge. Honor can make up for anything that you're lacking, anything. That's how powerful honor is. You have to learn to listen for honor. You got to learn to look for honor. And I know... Some of you are still scratching your head. What is honor? And we've just told you just moments ago. Honor is the willingness to reward someone for their difference. That's what it is in simple terms. But I want to I want I want to really I want to magnify this so that you really understand how big this is in your life right now. Your future depends upon what you're willing to let die. According to the Bible, every sin is a sin of dishonor. When we think of the Bible, and many of us are very familiar with the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments deal with honoring God. There's that word again, honoring God. The last six commandments deal with honoring people. In fact, it was Paul that said, Honor all men. There's that word again, honor all men. What does that mean? It means put a value on every human in your life. You see, I want you to understand that honor is a currency. It's the currency. Honor has a certain tone. Honor has a certain spirit. Honor has a certain energy. And I'm going to give you a variety of different examples of honor. Because my hope here today is I want you to now no longer be blind about what honor is, what honor sounds like, what honor speaks like, how honor shows up. I want want you to understand the spirit of honor. And I also want you to understand the spirit of dishonor. Because this is a law. This is a law that we cannot afford to miss. Your life depends on it. For those of you listening, just pause with me. Pause with me for a second. And just say out loud, God, teach me the law of honor. Say it again. God, teach me the law of honor. Say it with me. I will learn the law of honor.
let me share something. Loss of access. Have you ever once upon a time had access to, to someone that was going great places and someone that could make a big difference in your life? And in other words, once upon a time you had access to them, but you no longer have it anymore? Loss of access means loss of favor. Loss of access means loss of favor. And do you understand that when you talk about changing your life or going to the next level in your life, you do realize that to go somewhere, i.e. the next level, you need to gain access to that level. You, you do understand that, right, that you have to gain access to that level. So to gain access, that means I'm going to have to work with somebody at some time. And if I don't know this law of honor, then I could easily lose access, which means loss of favor in that situation. Let me talk about the law of honor as it relates to your workplace, be it a personal business that you may own or a job that you may be working. See, you should never be in the presence of a manager, a boss, you know, someone of authority, someone of authority in a higher position that you're esteeming to want to get to and be without a pencil, a sheet of paper, or a digital recorder. Let me say it again. We're talking about the law of honor. I'm giving you a physical example of how you show and display honor. I said you should never be in the presence of a manager, a boss, or person of authority that's at a level that you esteem to want to get to and be without a pencil, a sheet of paper, or a digital recorder. You see, we talked about the law of difference is the ability. Remember, we talked about the law of the of difference is the ability. Excuse me, we talked about we talked about wisdom being the ability to discern difference. And one of the differences that you need to learn to discern is the difference in a moment. In other words, I'm in front of somebody of power. I'm in front of somebody of prestige. I'm in front of someone that has, they're at a level that I want to get to or maybe even surpass. So the ability to discern the difference of this moment. I need to have a pen and paper right now. Let me share this with you why. The blessing that you are waiting on, and everybody is waiting on something, the blessing that you're working hard towards. You see, your blessing, my friends, is not going to come from a person. In other words, there's no one's going to give you a blessing so gigantic that that made all your dreams come true. No. What's going to happen, your blessing is going to come through a person. And when we say through a person, that means somebody's going to Say something to you, a set of words at the appropriate time. Notice I, notice I underscored the word appropriate. What makes it appropriate? It means when you're mature. It means when you're ready. It means when you're able to discern why everybody else is distracted, confused, partying, don't know what's going on. You, there you are. You zeroed in. Hey, 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 hey. Did you hear what he just said? Did you hear what she just said? You didn't hear it? Oh, okay, no problem. It wasn't for you. No, no big deal. You, you, you didn't have the maturity to discern that was the moment. See, your blessing is going to come through a person. They're going to say something to you that can be of great use for you. This is why it's important when we talk about wisdom being able to discern difference. Never be in the presence of somebody of power without a pencil, a sheet of paper, and a digital recorder. 
But if you are in the presence of people and you do have a pencil, sheet of paper, or a digital recorder, that shows you're honoring them. You're honoring the moment. That's honor. Very, very important that we all understand this. You know, one of the things that I ask God to do for me is I say, God, show me where I planted a seed of dishonor. Help me to correct it. Now, let me share with you why I do that and why I want to encourage you, all of us to do it is because this is a law that God set in place long before we were all born. It's a law. It's a law. We all got to work with people. Oh, nobody likes me. That's not true. It's not true that nobody don't like you. How about maybe if you started honoring folks, you would, you would see how beautiful the world is. Well, I'm just different. We all are different. Wisdom is the ability to discern difference, right? So I'm going to give you some more attributes in terms of honor in the workplace. Just a few things I want to leave you with. Having a willing heart. Now listen. (laughs) Listen. I'm not saying that every boss that you work for, that you're going to like them. I, no, I, I didn't say you had to like. Let me let, 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 let me be the first to tell you the the, the, the instructions and, and, the, and the discipline that my mother and my father was giving my brothers and I. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it one bit. Okay? I did not like it. but I had to honor my mother and father. I had no choice because they would not allow dishonor. They wouldn't allow it. But even though I may not like it and I may not like the instructions that's being given, as I grew up and I began to mature, And I noticed that my mother and my father wasn't going to (laughs) change. In other words, they wasn't going to start getting softer on me. They wasn't going to change. They wasn't going to change their position. So I started to mature and realize, wait a minute, I just need to learn how to follow these instructions. And so when we talk about honor in the workplace, having a willing heart, in other words, being the type of person that you want to do your job, You're looking forward to it. That's a sign of honor. Another one, asking questions is a sign of honor. Another one, having a a spirit of cheerfulness is a sign of honor. Another one, being uh, being speedy attention to a task that was asked of you is honor. Another one, showing your passion is a sign of honor. In other words, showing an attitude of, I want to do this. I'm fired up to do this. Okay, I may not like it, but this is what I got to do. With Let's do it. Let's get it on. All right? And here's a big one. And what I'm about to say next, this, my friend, is the biggest quality that will bring you financial provision. Let me say it again. This is the biggest quality that will bring you financial provision in your life, and it is trustworthiness. Can you be trusted to do the right thing? Can you be trusted when your boss is not looking over your shoulder? Can you be trusted 
in your competency. Can you be trusted to know that some things you need to keep in-house? Can you be trusted? Why is this so important? When we think of Pharaoh, King Pharaoh from the Bible, and we think of Joseph, because of the law of honor, Joseph became the number two man in Pharaoh's army. He went from the bottom to the top, all because of honor. He went from the bottom to the top. Trustworthiness, my friends, is extremely important. I want you to ask yourself, can I be trusted? I know you may not love your job today, but can you be trusted with the little? Can you be trusted? This is so powerful. I think of my executive assistant. Man, I love having her by my side. I love having her on my team. She's trustworthy. She's trustworthy. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. I want you to understand, guys, that the sound of honor will restore you. The sound of honor will restore you. What I'd like you to do real quickly, guys, is I, I want you to just, in the few minutes that we have left here, I've got a lot more that I would love, love to just share and teach, but I, I don't want to, like I said, overwhelm. I want to go real slow with this because this is a law, and it is, uh, it is a very, 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 very important law. I, I'd like to go back to just one thing that I mentioned to you earlier. I said to you guys, if, if, you, were, if you were paying attention here on the call, I, I talked about Honor can make up for anything that I'm lacking. I'm not perfect. I've got a lot to work on. I, I, I might, like I said, I ask God to show me where I've, you know, where I've planted a seed of dishonor. I want, I want to correct that. I want to correct that. And if you're wondering why I'm mentioning God so much as we talk about honor, I'm going to end it off with this. There is no way for you to honor man. I'm talking about man or woman if you don't honor God because God is who created man. And likewise, it's impossible for you to honor God and not honor your fellow man or woman. Because once again, God is who created man and woman. So when God was establishing his laws, honor is so important to him that he said to all children, he said, we must honor our father and our mother if we want our days to be long. He did not say, if you like your mama and your daddy, honor them. He said, based upon the laws that he set up, you must honor them, your father and your mother, if you want your days to be long. You know, my hope, because I know that this is a heavy topic, but, I, again, I didn't come here to be famous. I'm not looking for any quotes. I'm not looking for any 
uh, uh, social media responses. I'm not looking for any uh, YouTube comments. I don't even check the comments. I don't even look, just so you know. So don't even waste your time, okay? What, what, what I'm here for is to be effective. To be effective. And I know that there's somebody out there that really, really, really is serious about manifesting the next level of going to the next level in their life. They're really serious, looking for answers to be able to manifest what it is they're looking to manifest, to create major change, not just in their life, but in their generation. I know that there are people out there tired of doing the same thing over and over again, not seeing any results. And I'm painting a really good picture for all of you today that honor is the seed that guarantees access. When we look at Joseph, had he not shown honor, he would have never, ever, ever, ever gotten to the very top, second man in charge. There's so many places that we could really point out and show you how important honor is. My hope and my prayer today is that you receive the words that we spoke today. This call, the name of this call that we do every Sunday, it's brought to you by my company, and the name of the company is called Networking Wisdom. There it is, Networking Wisdom. And we've already talked about that wisdom is the ability to discern difference. Those of you that listen to uh, these calls that we do, you'll notice that I teach very specifically. I, I love to point out the differences in things. I don't like general teachings. I don't. I like to be very specific. Why? Because I love wisdom. I love wisdom. I'm always looking for more and more and more and more and more wisdom, which means I'm always looking at things, discerning difference. Well, how come he got it and he didn't? And what's the difference between the two? I'm always looking at that. And I want to encourage you to do the same. And this one principle, this one law that we're focused on today is a gigantic, I believe it's the biggest law, the law of honor. I understand the law of difference is huge, the law of recognition. There's so many other laws that we could talk about. We could talk about the law of, uh, we, we, we could talk about the, the, the law of reward. We could talk about the law of knowledge. We could talk about the law of, obe of, of obedience. We could talk about the law of, of authority. We could talk about the law of agreement, the law of excellence, the law of the mind, right? We could talk about the law of peace, the law of rest, the law of restoration. So many laws to talk about. But this one right here, the law of honor, honor will take you further than genius. It will take you further than genius. So listen, guys, I'm the California kid. There you have it. That concludes today's uh, call the law of honor. Do me a favor. Re-listen to this call three, four, five times. Take some notes that were suitable for you. Apply them right away. And above all, make sure you share this call with the people you love and you care for. Guys, always remember, as we say every single week, always remember in everything and in all that you do, there's nobody in the entire world any greater than you. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys all next week. Goodbye, everybody.